Yep. Thanks for being flexible, guys. Move practice up. I uh, wanted to make sure we got outside, uh, beat any weather that might be coming, any lightning that might be coming. So I appreciate you guys being flexible uh, and we'll get out there on the grass. I know the big guys prefer to be on the grass than, as opposed to inside. So we've got to have a good work day out there today. It'll be nice and steamy, um, which again, acclimating to Jacksonville weather is important. Um, speaking of Jacksonville, so the plan will be to rest the majority of the starters. Uh, I look at it as a great opportunity for young players, uh, young and old players, uh, to go out there and compete against a different color jersey. Uh, it's always fun to see the guys out there and, and making plays and seeing their teammates get excited about it. So looking forward to, to the experience of that first preseason game, seeing the guys out there. And, and it's all part of a, a teaching progression, a learning progression. Uh, we'll learn from the good and the bad that occurs. And then uh, also it's all part of the evaluation process. So with that, I will take any questions. Thank you, Coach. We'll start our questions with Nate Ulrich. Hey, Kevin, given that uh, decision, how much does the, you know, first 17 game regular season schedule have to do with your thinking here? And also just how do you view the preseason differently coming off a pandemic uh, 2020 year in which you didn't have any preseason games? Yeah, Nate, I think you take it all into account. I think you take what you learned last year. I take the extra game. You take your players. Uh, you know, as we talk about what we're going to do as, as a team and talk with, uh, about our plan with the coaches, et cetera, we're just going to do what we think is right for the Cleveland Browns and specifically what's right for each player. And that's how we'll approach uh, really all of our decisions. Thank you, Nate. Next is Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, yeah, Coach, can you maybe describe a little bit about how you will handle the quarterback situ situation? You know, Case has a lot of experience under his belt, but I mean, is this an opportunity for him to play most of the game or get Kyle some work? What will you do there? Yeah, Mary Kay, those guys uh, will we'll have a rotation. Case will start the game. Uh, you know, he didn't play a ton. I know he's played a ton in his career, but didn't play a ton last year. So uh, I think it's important for him to get back out there and, and perform uh, under the lights, so to speak. And then when he's done, Kyle will come in and, you know, the, the, the most, I was going to say the operative word, but what these guys have to do is operate. And, and that's what they're trying to do. They need to function, get guys in and out of the huddle, line them up, motion shifts, uh, get the ball out of their hand appropriately, those type of things. So looking for both those guys to operate uh, at a high level. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Kay. We'll go to Tom Withers. Thanks, Rob. Hey, Coach, do you envision the starters, though, playing in the preseason? I mean, the you know first, first team on both sides in one of these three games? I think we'll uh, address that when appropriate, Tom. I think we're, the focus is on this game uh, for right now. Okay, hey, we just talked to Felton a little while ago, and he said his only preference is he doesn't prefer wide receiver running back. He just prefers to get the ball. What have, uh, what have been your impressions of him as a playmaker? Yeah, he's done a really nice job, Tom. He, uh, he's as advertised as a person. Uh, his coaches out there at UCLA, UCLA loved him, uh, and he, he loves ball. He loves to, to compete, uh, whether it's at wide receiver or running back or in special teams. Uh, you, you get the sense that this kid really loves to play football. Uh, and like anybody, he'd love the ball in his hand, which is no shock. Um, but the kid, he, he's, he's a really, really competitive kid. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Tony Grossi is next. I wanted to change the subject to uh, the hamstring epidemic on your team. Uh, and I don't mean that lightly. Are your uh, sports science people telling you uh, what might be the reason, or is it just bad luck? What, what do you get? Yeah, I, I think soft tissue injuries, Tony, uh, are prevalent across the league in, in the first weeks of training camp. I think that's what the data suggests. Um, you know, obviously, we don't want, want anybody to get injured, and we try to prevent as many as we can. Uh, there's something about playing football, though, where you react and you burst which is different than training. You, you can train uh, quite a bit and be in great shape, but all of a sudden the ball's in the air and you got to burst for it. And that's oftentimes what happens with soft tissue injuries. So it's something that we spend a lot of time on trying to prevent. Uh, I'd love to tell you we, we could prevent all of them. I don't think that's realistic, uh, but it, it's the, it, is, 
it is the normal course of training camp and you got to practice football in order to, to get ready to play football. So again, hate that it's out there. Uh, I don't think we're different than most uh, that, that we're dealing with some of it right now. Um, but I'm hopeful over the course of the next few days uh, that guys start to come back off of that uh, group. And a question about Jacksonville's game. Will you alternate kickers or how do you propose to continue that competition? We will. We will alternate the kickers uh, with each um, opportunity. You know, Coach Preef has, has done this before and, and, and it makes sense uh, to do it that way because if you do it by game, you don't know the opportunities that one guy's going to get versus the next game. Thanks, Tony. Marla Reidenauer, you're up. Uh, yeah, Coach, one more thing about Felton. Does he, could he be the kind of weapon that you didn't have last year? And what did you see in him that makes you think that he could take on this? I mean, it's a tremendous amount of learning here for this, for a young guy. Yeah, I think, Marla, the, the role remains to be seen. It's what he makes of the role, quite honestly. Uh, but to be able to do both in practice is not easy. Uh, not easy for a young player. So again, I think it speaks to his intelligence. I think it also speaks to how he prepares. He, he works really hard to make sure that he's ready to go, uh, regardless of what position he may be playing that day. He wouldn't tell us what time he goes to bed at night. So do you, does that make you worry about how much he's sleeping? <laughs> he's up and at him early. So he's. it seems like he's getting plenty of rest. Thank you. Thanks, Marla. Scott Patrick. Hey, Kevin, I got a couple more uh, playing time questions. Do you expect all the healthy rookies to play, including Greg and Jeremiah? Yes. And how excited are you to see those guys on the field for the first time? Yeah, you know, Scott, I think it's going to be great to see those guys. I also think about the sophomore class, a lot of those guys who didn't have a preseason. Uh, to get them some game reps, I, I think, is, is just as exciting. And what about a couple of injured guys coming back? Greedy and Chris Hubbard, do you think they'll play? Uh, they will play, but we'll be uh, with everybody, Scott. I tell you, we have a plan for everybody to be smart about it, but the plan is for them to play. And, and we'll see how we uh, come out the next couple of days and, and see if that is, uh, you know, is that something that we can do come Saturday night? Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Matt Fontana, you're up. Kind of off that as well, Coach. I mean, it was always, you know, with the four preseason games, it seemed like everybody did the same thing. Starters a little, games one and two, the dress rehearsal, game three, and then game four, nobody played. Kind of loaded question. Why do you think that changed where a lot of you players are sitting and even league-wide, there's a lot of starting quarterbacks and starters not playing here in game one? Yeah, it's a good question, Matt. Um, I think if, if you kind of study what people have done over the last five years, some different philosophies have, have taken hold. I think certainly last year uh, was was eye opening for a lot of coaches, players. Uh, now, no one had a preseason last year. It was you know the same for everybody. So we're just trying to do what we think is right for each one of our individualized players. I think that's the important part for us is what does that player need to get ready for the season? And that the answer to that varies uh, by player. This might also vary then, Coach. What Do you think there is a magic number of preseason games? Is it just two? Is it just one with a joint practice? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, I think that's something that will continue to be discussed uh, at a level much higher than mine. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Jeff Shadell. Hey, Kevin, specifically on uh, JOK, is he caught up from missing that time with COVID, and how do you – really envision him playing Saturday. Yeah, I think he's working really hard to get caught up, Jeff. Uh, and he worked hard while he was out of the building to, to make sure that he was ready to hit the ground running. So he's, he's a young player. He's a rookie. He's learning. He's making mistakes. And then you got to correct him and, and get better. So he's going to make mistakes Saturday night. We get that. Hopefully he makes them at 100 miles an hour and, and learns from them. But he, he's working hard uh, to make sure he's ready to go. We have time for one more so coach can get out to practice. Dan Lobby. Hey, hey coach, I, I was actually just kind of curious with the, the guys that aren't playing on Saturday night. Will they still make the trip to Jacksonville? Will it be kind of case by case or, or will the whole team be, be there regardless? Yes, they're, uh, they will be there um, traveling with us. And, you know, we, we have a plan to, to work them out over the next few days to make sure that it's, uh, you know, so where they're staying in shape working with each other, working individual drills, those type of things uh, to make sure that you just don't lose three days, so to speak. 